Welcome back to another Back to 72 video and in today's video I'm back with another intern and I'm here with Lewis Van Pocht. Lewis, how are we? Oh, good thanks mate, how are you? I'm doing great mate, thank you very much for coming on the channel. Yeah, that's what I mean, alright. Nice one, and so am I right in saying you were, you were a light heavyweight who was 14, 152 and 4? That's it, yeah. yeah well, you. I wasn't... I went all the way from welterweight to cruiserweight, so yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you <laughs> but, did everything, man. Yeah. Okay, nice one. So if you are new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so like the if you do need like view and let's get straight into it. So just gonna go all the way back to the very start of your career. Uh why did you start boxing? Um I was I was getting picked on a bit when I was younger. I was a bit soft and um uh I was always into sports, I liked every sport. I sort of sort of tried every sport at, to like some sort of level, even like sports like basketball and athletics I've done mm -hmm. um, but I was quite soft and uh, I started toughing up a bit as I started playing rugby at school mm -hmm. um, and then I went to watch a boxing match um, when I watched my mate fight mm -hmm. uh, from Lydney and then uh, just got the bug then and I went down the boxing gym and just fell in love with boxing that day and I never looked back Indeed, indeed. And so, did you have much of a, an amateur of an, or an unlicensed background? Uh, yeah, I had um, 36 amateur fights, mm -hmm. uh, ma mo mainly as juniors, because I joined the army straight as, from some school. Okay. Uh, so I only had a couple of senior fights. Mm -hmm. But I did, uh, I did the ABAs a few times, and ACYPs a few times, and uh, always ended up losing out to either the finalist or the champion in the, mm -hmm. the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I was never a top amateur. I always had the good pro style mm -hmm. as opposed to amateur boxing because amateur boxing was different back then. You had mm -hmm. touch point scoring, oh, really? and I never really had the style for that. Mm, of course, of course. And so, why did you end up turning professional when you did? Um, like I said, I fell in love with boxing the day I walked in the gym. Mm -hmm. And um, from there... Like YouTube was sort of in its early days when uh when um when I first started boxing, so okay. there wasn't loads of stuff on on YouTube back mm -hmm. then. But I just found myself just constantly wanting to watch anything to do with boxing on YouTube. Um, and then from there, there was like Friday night fights. It was Frank Maloney and like people like Frank Warren and yeah. would put shows on Sky. Um, I was just seeing these guys that. I was I used to knock about with the amateurs on there, and I was like, "Hang on a minute." And then I started as I started getting more educated on boxing. Um, I started noticing how the styles are different to amateur and pro, and I realised that my style would be more suited to the pros. And mm -hmm. from then, all I ever wanted to do was go pro. So I just wanted to say I wanted to have just at least one amateur, one professional fight, mm -hmm. just there, so I've done it and. Uh, yeah, and then I I, just, I did that, and then I just tried to hash a career out of it. Uh, Realised quite early on that I wasn't going to be a superstar mm -hmm. or a world beater, so um, that's how I ended up going down the journeyman route. No, of course. Well, I mean, the, the what you've done in the in your career is is very impressive, and uh, well, I mean, of course, you probably didn't go in like you said, thinking you were going to be a journeyman. But in the end, you have been, and you have been in, like I said, many of fights, and so you've been often the away fighter. But how difficult can it be to be an away fighter? Um, don't know. You you've got to be cut from a certain type of cloth. You got to um. You got quite thick skin. You got yeah. you got you got to be resilient. But you can't you can't just. That I've seen I've, in my time. I've seen a lot of people come over to the amateur uh, away corner side, mm -hmm. and they, they, they've not been either good enough boxers. I've got a good enough ring IQ, and then there's not robust enough to be able to to stick it yeah. because uh, to make the to make the fights. Easy, if you like. I mean, no fight is easy, but to make it easier, yeah. you've got to have uh, a good boxing skills mm -hmm. and good ring generalship and good IQ. Boxing IQ. I haven't got a good IQ because I'm thick, but, <laughs> but boxing IQ. Yeah. So, so it, it can be quite tough out there. But I'd much rather have done it that way because I was in the home corner on the weekend and uh, uh, just running around selling tickets, man. It's 
It's a lot of work. It's, it's a headache. Mm. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, I, I mean, this this next question might be a bit of a tough question for you for you to answer, but of course, you've been in many a different fights now, and you're right at the end of your career. And so, could you maybe pick for me, maybe off the top of your head, your top five toughest fights? Toughest fights. I mean, there's 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 four fights which are really tough. Okay. For different reasons. Mm-hmm. So you got Lerone Richards and Zach Parker because they're just technically brilliant boxers, mm. twice my size, mm. um, and just like yeah, just every every punch in the book, every trick in the book, they're they're really good, yeah. skilled boxers. So that was that was hard. The both of those were hard nice work, mm-hmm. and look what they've gone to achieve. Of course, and then the two there's no two. Uh, re- one the most recent one was uh. Andre Desilu. Okay. I think that's how you say it. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just like, again, just technically brilliant. Mm-hmm. Just like, slick, nice and calm. Pick, just punches brilliantly. He was excellent fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Callan Simpson, because he's just big, strong lad. And he just throws a thousand punches. Yeah. <laughs> like, does sort of, and, and like heavy handed punches as well. He's like, People could throw a lot of punches and not not they could just you can take you can eat them, eat them all night. But mm. he was a tough night's work. Um, well, one really tough fight I had. It's a bit of a random one. Okay, and and, and not taking nothing away from from him from him here, mm-hmm. but I had a really tough night because I I wasn't in the gym. I got my license took off me for a bit. I had about a six week sabbatical. Because I, I got stopped by Callum Simpson, so I had to have twenty eight days anyway. Mm-hmm. And then the board slapped another two weeks on. Okay, so probably worked out about seven weeks I had off in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, um, I, 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 I took a late notice fighting as William Weber. Mm-hmm. I hadn't been in the gym once since I'd yeah. uh, had that sabbatical, and I just you know, found it really tough in mm-hmm. there. Yeah, because um, he was just about to fight for the Southern Area title. I was like mm-hmm. tuned up for him, mm-hmm. and uh, they, I found that really tough that that night. But that was mainly my doing, I think, because I boxed him before when I was fit, and I didn't really struggle that much with him. Mm-hmm. No, definitely, and that kind of leads on to my next question. I mean, of course, you've you've fought a lot, and you've fought at times back to back to back weeks, and kind of consistent, very consistently fighting. And so, how do you keep yourself so well conditioned? I suppose. It's hard, man. Like it's the same as any job. Mm. Like um, some days you fancy going into work, some days you're keen, mm. some days you're not. Yeah. Some days you might feel a bit under the weather, but you're still going to work. Yeah. It's the same as the journey, man. Like some weekends that you really can't be bothered. Mm-hmm. You reluctantly get in the car and you go there, mm-hmm. and then you do a lot of waiting around, and then by the time you get into the the ring, you're feeling a bit lethargic and a bit tired. Um. Yeah, so, and then, like, you're fighting every week, so you got to be in the gym all week, yeah. really. Sometimes that, that can be detrimental, like, mm-hmm. you can sort of not overtrain, but you just, but you get a bit of burnout. Yeah, like, of course. Being in the gym, like, every week, going and getting home from work and then going, right, now I have to go to the gym because I've got to fight this weekend. Yeah. It's a bit, it can get a bit tedious. Mm-hmm. But then, also... Like I just said, the gym can get very tedious anyway. Mm. So you end up going, oh, I can't be bothered to go to the gym at all. So then well, the problem I always had was I would go, I'll have Monday off because I fought on Saturday. Yeah. And then I'd, then I'd get home from work on Tuesday and be like, oh, I can't be bothered to go to the gym. Like, yeah. And then, so I wouldn't go to the gym then. And then then I might go and train Wednesday. Train Wednesday, but I have like a, like a, like a just a little, uh, tick out session mm-hmm. and then sometimes it would like Thursday after work I was like Mike oh, I really don't want to do it yeah. so sometimes I've gone to the gym gone on the treadmill for 10 minutes and just left mm. like like psychologically you've done something in the gym but it's nowhere near enough mm. like, but yeah so in terms of just keeping yourself conditioned like you sort of get your, fit, your ring fitness by fighting of course yeah yeah and then you sort of fight every weekend you got your your ring fitness there, and then you just call up on that, mm. as well as using ring generalship and IQ. Mm-hmm. 
okay that's that's interesting that's that's fair enough and so i suppose when you are going into these fights against these fighters which i suppose you aren't really expected to win against are you wanting to go in there maybe go for maybe a six round fight or an eight round fight or do you prefer maybe just having the four round fights and i suppose at times getting it over with or at times maybe in a four round fight you can have a better chance of winning um never really won never really fought about it to be honest as i was, I was just given given a set set of rounds mm-hmm. um i don't know you keep i mean you don't really want to be doing six round fights every week because mm-hmm. that's how you get burnt out and tired and blip blip more wear and tear four rounds nice quick and easy you're in the ring from ring walking to getting back to the dressing rooms about 20 minutes mm. so like it's not a long long night's work yeah, like yeah. um six rounds is gonna be a bit more taxing generally the pace is a bit slower but mm. it's still an extra two rounds but i never really thought about it i did i just got on with it and it never bothered me how many rounds i was doing that's fair. That's probably why it has made you, I suppose, such a game journeyman. The fact that you've, I suppose, you have just gotten on with it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. And so, I mean, of course, you have ended your career now, but you ended it on a win. And so, how kind of nice was it to end end it on a victory? <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, it was good. Like, I feel so content with my decision. Mm-hmm. Partly because, like. I made the decision like three months ago. I made the decision, ironically, on Boxing Day. Okay. Um, I, was, I was chatting to my dad about it. Um, I said, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. So he said, you know, if I say you feel, then that's maybe the sign's right. Because mm-hmm. uh, at the start of December, bearing in mind, I never pulled out a fight in my life mm-hmm. uh, for any reason but, uh, other than an injury. Yeah. Uh, or um, a suspension mm-hmm. but I never pulled out of a fight on my own doing until the start of December okay. I woke up in the morning of the fight and I went I can't be bothered tonight mm-hmm. I'm not fighting so I rang Rich Richard Farnham who's my manager mm-hmm. and I said I'm not doing it tonight mate I'm not doing it tonight so he's like oh, alright fair enough yeah. so I found a replacement got the replacement in mm-hmm. and then and then I went, I'm not fighting now this year. I'm not fighting again this year. We'll go again in February. Mm-hmm. And then like, as like Christmas build up and then chatting with dad about it, I said, yeah, I'm done. Mm. I'm done. So then uh, then I started seeing a few shows were getting uh, announced locally. Yeah. There was one in Cardiff, which I inquired about, which was in February. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd go on that show. That'd be my last fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the same promotion company went, we got one in Bristol or the month after. You just want to get on that one. Yeah. So I asked even better. That works out brilliantly. It gives myself three months to to ponder it, think about it, get ready for it, sell some tickets, and then um, yeah. And then when it went like after when it happened, I felt so content after mm-hmm. like seeing my friends and family cheering and chanting and crying and sending me off. Yeah. Um, it was a special night. Mm. No, that, that's great. That's great, and I'm sure for them, your your fans, they've seen you go through so much in your career that a nice win at the end was also very nice for them. Yeah, mate. Yeah, like uh, oh, it's always been a bit of a running joke. Like, uh, oh, people saw it. How was your weekend? What did you go to? Oh, I had a boxing match. <laughs> How'd you get on? Lost them. Then they would answer the question for me. <laughs> Lost some points. <laughs> yeah. So then, so then, um, yeah. So then it just come a bit of a running joke. So uh, from from the see me get a win, mm. it was good. And I actually boxed really well, considering I didn't have the best prep. Like one of the reasons again I'm retiring is because of uh, I've, I've got these naggy little injuries which play me up, which means I can't train properly these days. Um, slash that coupled with a bit a little bit of motivation, mm. can't really be bothered to go to the gym all the time. I work quite long hours in quite a physical job, so uh, um. Sometimes I can't really be bothered after work, mm-hmm. so that 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 played a factor. Didn't trade nearly as much as I should have done, mm-hmm. and I had to wedge a week long stag do in there. <laughs> but I had to say, I went to Bulgaria on a stag do, right. so that was that was a week of red wine and <laughs> lager and fried food. So that wasn't a great great prep. But uh, that considered, I actually boxed really well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, not my finest polished performance, but um, yeah. Yeah. Got the W, 
land some nice shots. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. Indeed, it is. Indeed, it is. And so, I suppose just to kind of speak about the, the sport of boxing as a whole, you have been arguably the most game German, journeyman in the whole of the UK recently. And uh, so, what's the importance of having journeymen in the sport? Uh, journeymen, I mean, I could sit here and describe journeymen until I'm blue in the face, and mm. your listeners probably still wouldn't understand it. Uh, but essentially, if you imagine boxing is on timeline, mm. the start of that timeline. It, uh, the end of that timeline is Tyson Fury and mm. all the other world champions. They're all up there on the end of that timeline. They've completed it. Yeah. There's segments on that timeline that need to be ticked off before you can get to that level. Of course. The first segment on that 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 level is um, zero fights to an area title. Yeah. So that's a seven area title for this for this. So that boxer who's had zero fights wants to get into position to fight for an area title. Mm-hmm. To do that, he needs to have ticked a few boxes himself. Mm-hmm. So he needs to complete a four-rounder, a six-rounder, an eight-rounder, right? To then be able to fight for the area title with a ten-rounder. Yeah. So, whilst they're having their first five, ten, fifteen fights, mm-hmm. they're fighting people like me, i.e. the journeymen, yeah. in their hometowns. So they sell all the tickets. So say I'm fighting a lad from London, mm-hmm. He lives in London. He sent all the tickets to his mates and friends and family in London. Yeah. I just turn up, don't sell a single ticket, just to give the guy a workout and a mm. showcase. And if he's good enough to beat me, he'll win easily. Mm. If he's not, and I'm and I fancy it, then they've got a bit of a problem. Of course. And then then it's just down to me in these in that sort of scenario. Then it's down to me what sort of fight I make it. If I want to make him look good, but educate him at the same time, I can. Mm. If I want to maybe show him, we, me, and my, me and my coach used to have a, a saying, welcome to the pros. Yeah. Um, like, it's a different ball game. Like, you, you, we punch harder, we're tougher, we're stronger people, yeah. we're grown men. Mm. So, uh, so that's what that's that's another thing that we used to do if they weren't quite up to scratch. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I might, I might let them win the fight, mm-hmm. but I'll just have that little, that little look in my eye of, like, if I wanted to, I could. Yeah. And nine out of ten, they they were educated enough to realise that. Mm. No, no, that's that's a, that's a good and a definitely experienced mindset. And so, I suppose to to maybe go back, if you could ever go back to a a time of maybe a version of you which was just turning pro, what would you say to him? Don't know. Don't know. Like, I don't know. I'll, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to say really as soon as everyone's career path is different okay. like I chose I I was lucky enough to be able to be in and amongst uh, professional changing rooms before I turned pro myself yeah. so I saw what was happening backstage and then I realised what a journeyman was mm. I learned I learned that before I'd even turned pro mm-hmm. um, and I saw I started mixing with like people like Christian Lay and Daniel Thorpe and Sid Razak Mm-hmm. These sort of fires, you know. Mm-hmm. I just see him around the dressing rooms, and then, uh, yeah. But everyone's career path's different. There's some people who aren't quite up to scratch, mm-hmm. and who aren't going to be a world beater. They'll have a handful of fights and never box again, yeah. or they go down the journeyman route. So it's hard to say which what what I, what I would have said to me back then, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Okay, no, that, that's fair, that's fair. And so I suppose now you have retired and you've come to an end of your career, how would you like to be remembered in boxing? Um, as one of boxing's nice guys. Mm-hmm. I was always always carried myself well, I thought. I was always pleasant to people. I never got involved in much confrontation. I was not a, wasn't that sort of guy. I don't really like confrontation anyway, but mm. um, I never got involved in any politics backstage or anything. Uh yeah, and just like as as a character, I guess I've been from all the videos and stuff of, of people and the, all the well wishes I've been getting. Um, I think that is how I'll be remembered as a bit of a character. Mm-hmm. I carved it out my own way. I was a bit different, and uh, and that's something I can take with me forever. Mm, definitely, definitely, and uh, so I suppose now that you've you've come to an end your career, like I said. Would you, or will you still be trying to get involved with the sport at all, and maybe maybe coach of a journeyman or anything like that? I'll give other journeyman advice, but in terms of 
coaching. I'm not interested in that. Mm. Uh, I've given I've given so much of my free time up to boxing uh, on on like weekdays, like going to the gym on the evening when I could have been out for dinner with my mates or whatever, you know. And I don't want to do that again. I don't want to have to go to the gym every night. And and like you have to be more dedicated to the gym as a trainer than you do as a fighter. Of course, you've got other people and you've got yeah. other people's interests, and they're relying on you. I haven't got that time slash energy mm. to do it. But um, concurrently, whilst I was boxing, I, I passed my referee's assessment. Okay. So I'm actually a professional ref now. Mm-hmm. So now that's my next step. Okay, that's that's interesting. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, and so I'll leave with this final question, which I always like to ask. You've got a little bit of a platform here. Would you like to shout anything out? Um, no, I just, just want to say thank you to everyone who ever believed in me, supported me, bought a ticket, uh, used me on this show, every opponent I've ever fought. Mm-hmm. Obviously, thank you thank you to Richard and Claudia for being on my corner all this time, especially Richard for being there for the last 10 years mm-hmm. and 167 fights. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And uh, obviously, give, give Axel a like and follow and subscribe. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Well, um, yeah, thank you very much for this interview, mate. It's been a pleasure to have you on the channel. And uh, if you are new around here and you haven't subscribed, please, please do so. Like the video if you do need like the video. And thank